All right, Bear Bets Podcast is back. I'm your host, the Bear, Chris Felica. Jeff Schwartz will be joining me shortly, as will Jimmy Conrad. We're going to kick around to start this bad boy off with the Euro 2024. The knockout rounds are set. And uh, really some intriguing matchups, some intriguing results, some great stories uh, with, with Georgia getting through, uh, some some late drama in in, in, in the Czechia-Turkey match, with the Turkey getting, getting through with the 2-1 win as well. However, I think the, the place to start, at least for me, Jimmy, is if you look at these pre-tournament favorites, France, Belgium, Netherlands, England, uh, England thank you. I, you hear these theories about teams, how they like to play themselves into the tournament. Are we at a point now, maybe with a team like England especially, where – Playing your way into the tournament may not happen. Like, are those four teams, like, is there a team that you're really concerned about here or a team that you think, okay, they really are going to play, play themselves into the tournament now, now that we are in the knockout round? So I'll start with England. They're tricky because they haven't performed well, but yet they won the group and are into the knockout rounds. On the defensive side of the ball, I think they're really sound. I think they're, they know their identity. They know how they should move. They're difficult to break down. They got Jordan Pickford in goal. He's going to make the key saves, which he's done so far. So my concern is less with them defensively. It's more on attack. They have world-class players in multiple positions. They have all these players playing in the Premier League, which is, I'm going to put air quotes up for everybody that's <laughs> listening, is the best league in the world. But yet they can't seem to figure it out. I mean, let's take a look at their team. They have Jude Bellingham. He is, just got named as the La Liga player of the season. They have Harry Kane, who is a Golden Boot winner in Germany in Bundesliga. They got Phil Foden, who was named as the Premier League player of the season. And you're telling me you can't generate any kind of attack with those types of names? And you got Bukayo Saka, who's on the other side. It's, it really defies logic in some ways. And it just doesn't seem like they have the right balance of players. And, and Gareth Southgate, I mean, in terms of growing into the tournament, to really directly answer your question... I don't know if he's going to figure it out because he's tinkering and none of the tinkering is working either. It, it, at some point, you, have, you can't just say, oh, we don't have Calvin Phillips and Luke Shaw. Like, I, you, can't, <laughs> you can't just like say that. Like, right. You constructed the team. You knew what you had going in. Like, There's no way, even on that soft side of the draw, I say soft side of the draw, the, the weaker side of the draw, yeah, there's not a chance in the world I could bet England at plus 350 to win this thing. Now, I, as Jeff, as you know, we have that England bet to to reach the final, and they certainly have a uh, an easier yeah. path to get there. But are, are you thinking about mm. maybe looking at someone else on this side of the bracket to maybe get off that England bet somehow? I, I'm not looking at anyone. I'm going to keep it and, and let it ride, right? We have a chance at some point, Bear, to play that off during one of the games, right, with the way the wagering goes, especially the live wagering. We talked about this on the last show, and we've been texting back and forth about this, that the live wagering opportunities make this um, a, a way to get just better numbers as we go on, right? So I'm probably going to stick with it. I was asked, Jimmy, like, if you look at at the side that they're on right now, right, no Germany, no Spain, no France, no, no, no Portugal, which of the teams on their side of the knockout bracket – uh, is the one you're most concerned that can beat England? Yeah, great question. If they can get Italy in the quarterfinals, that becomes an interesting one because Italy beat them in the Euro final the last time around. So there feels to, feels like there'll be some more emotional weight in that particular game. Though I wouldn't discount the Swiss. I, I, I'm a big fan of their team. Uh, Granit Xhaka has been a cornerstone for, for his country and then helped Bayer Leverkusen win the Bundesliga this past year and former Arsenal player, so some people are probably familiar with him. He's a, he's a very good player, and I think he's demonstrated that he's got that winning mentality, and I think Switzerland are going to be tough to break down, not only for Italy, but if they get past Italy, against England as well. It's hard to say, right? It, it's one of those things where, with England in particular, are they just a team that just don't know how to get out of their own way? And that becomes very <laughs> difficult if you are betting on a team that has the potential to score three goals every single game, but never realizes that potential. If you go to the higher part of the same side of the bracket, I don't know who's coming out of that one. The Netherlands have underperformed. You have Austria that's overachieving in some ways. They won a very tough group over the Netherlands and France. Turkey, a, you never know which version of them is going to show up. And you have Romania as well, who won Group E. If On paper, I think we got Netherlands and Romania coming out of that side of it. And then whoever wins that, or excuse me, uh, Netherlands and Austria. If the Netherlands get out, then you might have a, a Netherlands-England. But again, to your point, Bear, these are teams that aren't playing to the quality that they have on their team. 
And that gets really tricky from a betting perspective. Yeah, that, that's the amazing thing. If you look on that draw, you've got England, who are playing well, certainly offensively. Austria, who is a, is a, a beautiful, a, a great story, who probably have been the most impressive team to, and certainly the most aesthetically pleasing team to watch so far in the tournament. The out of form Dutch, Italy, which fell behind Albania and needed an 88th minute goal against Croatia, Romania, Turkey, Slovakia, and Switzerland. One of those teams are going to be in the final. Uh, with an opportunity to, to win this tournament. But, but Austria, like, like I said, 17 to 1 to win the tournament, 7 to 1 to reach the final. That's probably not a bad play at all. I mean, considering I like them against Turkey. I, I think that Turkey aside, defensively, I think they have some problems. Now they do have some 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 scores with Arda Guler and some and some and some other players as well. But I, I like Austria uh in that match. I saw 105. It seems a little light. The one thing I do worry about though, and Jeff. You know that I think my mind thinks like this, and, and Jimmy, you can weigh in as well. Like, I wonder if the bandwagon is a little bit too heavy now <laughs> with, 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 with Austria. They, they've been the story of the tournament, like getting this far and being so much fun to watch, and the, the, the great match against Netherlands and, and somehow winning that group. I just yeah. wonder, if, like, at some point, does, does the clock strike midnight? Well, I guess there's a question for you guys, since you guys watch a lot more of this than than, than I do. Is is momentum like a thing when you have three to four days off in a tournament like this? Like, like do you feel that teams that sort of start fast or, or get hot are able to continue going forward? Or when they do run up against a more talented team, that momentum that they started with the tournament with sort of ends quickly? You know, they, they play, you know, not infrequently, but, you know, three or four days is a kind of a big drop to have that momentum continue. Yeah, that's a great question. I can speak from experience, having played for a long time, got a chance to play in the World Cup for the U.S. I remember we were in Germany in 2006, and we were the last group to play. And it just felt like we were waiting forever to play that first game. And then you get that first game under your belt, and I think it allows you to make adjustments. And one, ultimately, from a player perspective, you get to rest, right? You get that first game under your belt, you get to see who's healthy, who can maybe help you in different ways based on the opponent. And I think it gives you enough time. I actually thought five days in between games is a little bit too much. I appreciate having three or four because you can just kind of keep into that rhythm that you're talking about. So, so I don't think it's going to impact them too much. I do think at times if a team maybe survives going into, into the knockout rounds, like a Portugal, right? They made eight changes to their starting 11 uh, against Georgia. They end up losing 2-0. They don't play very well. Now they can have a couple days to reset, regain their, their, their confidence and their mentality and how they want to perform, probably get all their starters back in as they prepare for Slovenia. So, yeah, I guess you could, you could use, you could talk about both sides of the coin there, Bear. But as it pertains to Austria, I think what's interesting about that game against Turkey is that Turkey are going to lose a defender or two because of yellow cards. Oh. So, so that's going to weaken Turkey even more. And I like that value a little bit with Austria. It, it, Wait, well, plus 105, you said? It, uh, my, minus 105. On the, on the 90 minute line. If it, there's no way that guy can be near a pitch the rest of the tournament. That was an embarrassment. <laughs> well, Kovacs today, the the, the 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 official who handed out what was it? Uh, was it eleven cards? So many cards. Ooh, it, but it, it was, but it a lot was, of players getting suspended now for the round of sixteen, which I think does impact some of the teams out there. It, it, it certainly does. And we mentioned Italy on the bottom part of this. Like, I wonder. Like, we talked. The draw is there for England. Everyone's mentioned England. They looked into this. E seemingly easy path again. I just think their weaknesses are going to finally manifest. I don't think they suddenly just all because they have a, an easier draw get there. I, I, I'd be I'd be looking at uh, who take take your pick, your choice. I, I Austria to reach the final, Netherlands to reach the final, Italy to reach the final. Maybe play them with some of the with with France and uh, in Spain and Germany on the other side to, to name the finalists like uh, I think there's probably some value to be had there with, with those with those other teams outside of England on the uh, the one side of the bracket um and I I don't even think it's it's if we want to talk like big picture of the tournament as well like none of the none of the big names we, we, the Georgian player right now leads the golden boot race with three and he probably only has one match left so like they're not gonna win. Like getting bets on like players of the tournament, like I still think I know Jimmy, you're a big fan of Nolo Conte at 14 to one. That's someone who you could play. Pedri at 22 to one, I think, is someone you could play if Spain were to win. In I don't even think it's crazy to take a stab at someone like Donnarumma at 65 to one because if 
they get to the final, he's going to be the big reason why. He's been unbelievable in the tournament. So, like, we haven't seen Mbappe and, and Kane and all the Ronaldo and all the goal scorers go crazy. And that was one of the reasons why before the tournament we were talking about Dark Horse, like Golden Boot odds and who's going to win the Golden Boot. And I was like, I don't want to play Mbappe. I don't want to play Kane. I don't want to play Ronaldo. I, I don't want to play all these short prices. I think it's going to set up for someone to – to, to, to be a wild card. And that's kind of like why I said, okay, let's take a shot with, with, with Art Abdovic, who led La Liga in scoring. And Ukraine, they got four points like I kind of thought they would. And unfortunately, they were being, um, they're, they're left out. So you got a team, they were fourth place in their group with four points. And you have a third, a, a third place team with three getting through. So it, it's just, um, it's unfortunate, but that, those, those are the rules. And that's how we get. But yeah, those are just some, some player of the tournament prices that I thought were, uh, we're interesting, Jimmy. Do you have anybody else maybe that you've seen play that maybe you don't necessarily know the prices, but that might be a uh, kind of a a play here at this point? Yeah, I feel like you got to reverse engineer it, and I'm curious what Jeff thinks about this in terms of who he thinks is going to get to the final. If France is still a, a team that I would look at, you know, you mentioned N'Golo Kante. I'm a huge N'Golo Kante fan, everybody. I, I think I have his pajamas at home. I really appreciate what he brings to the table, an unsung hero in so many different ways. And if France went on to win it, maybe they would give that player of the tournament award to someone like him. And he helped them win a World Cup in 2018. So obviously he's got a lot of experience in knowing how to win these types of competitions. So you can't sleep on this French team based on their experience. One in 18, the World Cup that is. 2022, they got to the final. So, so that is a priceless component and a character trait to have of a team. Now, that said, I, I, I wonder how these teams, because when I think about France, when I think about the Netherlands, when I think about England, and, and maybe those three in particular, I don't think they've played their best game in the tournament yet. And is that going to show up in the knockout rounds? And will they even get that opportunity to, to showcase themselves, which is kind of what we were talking about with England before. Can they figure it out? Can they unlock their attack? to really kind of take that step and get that momentum to get into the final. So I guess it comes down to that uh, reverse engineering. But Spain has been the best team. They're excellent on both sides of the ball. And what I really love about Spain is they've been doing it over a consistent amount of time. So if you went back to World Cup, excuse me, Euro qualifying, in their 10 games, eight wins, two draws, 25 goals for, five against under their coach Luis de la Fuente. And then they come into this tournament, five goals for, zero against, they win all three of their group games. The last time they did that was in 2008 when they also won the Euros. And they just seem to have that nice balance. So if I was really looking at a player, it's a really long answer for you here, Bear and Jeff, but, but I'd maybe look at a, a player on Spain. Maybe, you know, Pedri's not a bad shout. Nico Williams could be a good shout. Uh, Alvaro Morata has been wearing the captain's armband when he's healthy. Maybe looking at him to, because to, all of a sudden, if he gets two or three goals, he's mm -hmm. right in the mix for, for the golden boot. And that could happen uh, against a Georgia in particular. I don't know, Jeff, how, who are you thinking about you, with regard to the final? I, I was asking you about France and, and Belgium. They both have scored two goals and allowed one. How do you break through in a game like that when those teams seem very square? Now, we've watched a lot, a lot of Belgium because Bear and I and <laughs> Sammy and Will have put a lot of money on Belgium in, 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 after their, uh, their upset in the first game. But they, they just don't put the ball in the net. France hasn't been as lucky as, as, as well. So who kind of breaks through that match? Because it feels like, you know, if we think France is going to get to the final, they got to score some goals in this game. They haven't scored a, a goal from open play yet. They got an own goal and, and for, from Mbappe from the spot. So it is interesting that they've generated all these opportunities. But I, I think at this point, Jimmy, six to one on France, I think it's a really good uh, buy low option. You just look at the, I think they'll beat Belgium. I, I think, I, I think the, the 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 back line for Belgium is a massive, massive problem. Uh, they or Fias, I should say, uh, in Vertonghen is what thirty eight years old yeah. now. Like they, they are problems back there. Um, so I, I think this will be the game where France actually do show up and finally break through. I mean, you, you, men you mentioned Spain. They may potentially have to play Germany if Germany are fortunate enough to get. Uh, past Denmark, this side is just is it's just is just loaded. Yeah, I would say with the France Belgium game in particular, it feels like a trap game because you just never know which version of Belgium is going to show up. However, I think there is some history at play here. In their four previous tournaments, major tournaments that is before the 2022 World Cup, they had made it to the quarterfinals or farther in all four of those. Then the 2022 World Cup. They're in a manageable group for me. They had Canada, who they beat barely 1-0. Michi Batshuayi scored in that one. Then they didn't score against Croatia, didn't score against Morocco. I mean, we're talking about some world-class talent or, or what's perceived as world-class talent, because clearly it's not on display in some of these tournaments. 
Then they come into this one. They got a new manager in Domenico Tedesco, and you're thinking, cool, they cruise through qualifying. They look like they got it all figured out again, and they continue to struggle. Yes, on the defensive side, they haven't given up much, but they're not scoring very much either, and I just don't know what's going to unlock it for him outside of Romelu Lukaku actually finishing his chances. <laughs> and that, at this point, is a coin flip if he's going to do it or not. And, and so will they show up? Will they have that big game against France where what I think is interesting is that Belgium were the favorites in their group, in Group E. They were the clear favorites. Every single game, they were favorite. They walk into this one, and they're the underdog. And I wonder if that, that flip of mentality of like, hey, we got nothing to lose and everything to gain gives them that, that edge to relax and play. If those guys relax and play, that's a hell of a game. Whereas France pretty much accept the fact that they're going to be favorites in every single game that they step into. And, and that's part of becoming a World Cup champion and having some incredible players. I would look at the starting 11 before I would bet on that game, frankly, for France. I think they're better with Olivier Giroud up there where they have a proper number nine that Kylian Mbappe can run off of. Mm -hmm. If they don't have someone like that up there, or if they're asking Mbappe to play that role, I don't think he's as effective. So I would really look at the starting 11s. It gives you about an hour to make your bets <laughs> uh, before kickoff. But, but that's just something to take into consideration yeah. because they move better with different players on the field. Yeah, yeah, Mbappe on the left is so much more dangerous than than having him up top. I, I, it'll, be, it'll be curious to see. And we'll, and we'll see with, um, with with Belgium today, too. Like, when they had uh, Trossard out there, uh, they were a completely different team than what they were uh, earlier in the tournament. So once, once the yellow cards suspension and they get their, their player back. Yeah, Luka Bakio. Luka, Luka Bakio, thank you. Yeah, very good player. I, I, I was, I was going to say, I kept having Lukaku in my head. I'm like, it's not like, <laughs> and I wanted, I met, you, I wanted I to make you. sure I didn't say it. So we'll, we'll, we need him to score a goal, Bear, that's there. why. Well, we, we lost so much money in him not scoring a goal in this. In this. Uh, we, we've seen, guys, uh, two of the biggest upsets in, in Euro history the last couple of days, right? Georgia won, Slovakia won their first game. Jimmy, is there is there a matchup that, that you kind of have an eye on, like, Maybe we're, the odds probably won't be as big, but like, oh man, maybe a third upset here of the Euros. Well, I mean, you have to look at all those teams, Slovakia, Slovenia, Georgia, uh, even Romania to a certain extent. You know, they survived Group E. They, they found a way to get through it. They beat Ukraine 3-0. I was really impressed with their first performance. They're up against the Netherlands, who another team that haven't really been fired in all cylinders, despite the massive amount of talent that they have on their squad. So, so... Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a good question. Is Slovakia versus England. These teams are feeling like they're playing with house money at this point. They got nothing to lose. I assume one of them is going to break through. It's just a matter of which one you want to pick. I don't see Georgia beating Spain. This is their first major tournament. They, they are definitely playing with house money just being in the tournament. And the fact they got to the round of 16, a uh, shout out to them and, and their manager, Willy Sanyol, who played for Bayern Munich for, for many years and for France. Uh, Slovenia. They got Jan Oblak in goal, one of the best goalkeepers in the world, plays for Atletico Madrid. So say against Portugal, he decides to stand on his head and make a whole bunch of saves. We've seen it. We've seen it with the U.S., with Timmy Howard. You know, And, and uh, I remember Brad Friedel back in 2002 in the World Cup when the U.S. made a deep run into the quarterfinals. I mean, you just don't know if they're going to have that type of performance. But I'm sure Slovenia, Slovakia excuse me, are probably licking their chops the most because England feel the most vulnerable, I would say, of those teams. And, and maybe Netherlands could be thrown in there too. But yeah, I, I guess... So Romania, Slovakia is kind of what I'm looking at. I think Portugal and Spain will do the business. So shout out to the Iberian Peninsula there. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's interesting because if you wanted to go money line and in the 90 minutes, could you, could you double chance a Slovakia or, or a Romania against one of the bigger nations? And, and maybe one of them will get that. into it. I don't. I wouldn't hate Romania double chance. I, I double chance. I, I wonder what the value all. would be on the double chance. I like to bet the double chance a lot, and and uh, we, we have ways of finding that for each. Yeah, so we can we can figure that out. But I I I would look at double chance uh, at Slovakia in particular because I could see England doing the old England and just not scoring the goals or taking their chances, and Slovakia gaining in confidence as the game went along. And then it goes 0-0 after 90, and then you know England will somehow squeak it out in penalties or score or something and added extra time, but. Um, yeah, they're, they're, there's probably some good value on some double chance with some of these teams. And, and who's to say Slovenia couldn't take Portugal to ex extra time and, and then you get some pretty good value on the double chance. So I don't know, something, something to consider. I'm, I'm, on the, uh, I'm, on the, I'm on that game prop right now. I don't see the... Uh, yeah, they're, they're starting uh, to Slovakia the plus 185. Slovakia or a draw plus 185. Win or draw. Slovakia or a draw, yeah, Slovakia or a draw plus 185. So I mean, I, I, I would look at it. Um, uh, because, because why not? <laughs> I, yeah. I really enjoy watching English fans <laughs> suffer. So, so why not put a little bit on it to see? 
this is maybe I got on a little bit of a TikTok rabbit hole here, but the Netherlands pregame fan chant. I don't know what the I don't know what the actual maybe that's not the proper name for it. It's like the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Do you have a favorite country like pump up celebration beforehand? Because I this is like I've I've watched a lot of videos of the Dutch fans having fun before the game. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually had a chance to hang with the Dutch fans ahead of the 2012 Euros that was being held in Poland and Ukraine. And they drive this thing around called the Orange Bus. And I got to go on the bus and I got to go down the middle of thousands and thousands and thousands of Dutch fans. And they are having the best time. So yeah, if you want to be Dutch for any major tournament, I highly suggest it. It, it is a good time. And you'll probably be consuming some adult beverages along the way. What was interesting though, is I kept in contact with everybody that ran the Orange Bus and all that. And they ended up, we met, we met in Brazil and they shipped the orange bus and it took them months. They, 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 <laughs> they put it on a boat over the Atlantic, picked it up in, in like Maine and then drove it down through the Americas down into Rio de Janeiro. And that's where I met up with them once again to ride on the orange bus in Brazil. They are dedicated. They are passionate and it is a good time. But yeah, there's a lot of incredible fan bases out there, but the Dutch... I got to give them a big shout out. They are next level. Well, we appreciate the uh, trip down memory lane with the Tangerine Dream. Uh, we, we'll, we'll see if the, the Netherlands can uh, win our bet, by the way, Joe. I just realized we got a <laughs> Netherlands to get to the quarter to reach the quarterfinal. We have bet. a lot despite of the, we have a despite lot of the fact that they finished third in their group, uh, their odds actually got shorter and better. Uh, to, to, yeah. to win the group, win the win the title, get to the final, and and advance. So, Jimmy, we appreciate your time. Thank you. We took far too much of it, but uh, appreciate all your insight. And hopefully, we'll uh, have another chance to catch up as the tournament progresses. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Of course, Copa America continues uh, on Thursday. USA back in action against Panama, uh, fresh off the two nil win against Bolivia. Hey, we actually won a wager, Jeff. Uh, we did. Nil, we got a clean, clean sheet, minus yeah. the goal and a half. However, I think there were some some warning signs. Uh, it looked like, a, 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 as some people out put it out there, it was like a cross and hope for the best with like 20-something crosses. Uh, they really didn't generate a ton of scoring opportunities uh, outside of the, the Pepe chances late. Um, it, it maybe looked a little bit like that once they got the early lead, they knew they weren't going to be threatened. So... I think there are some uh, some things to improve yeah. on in this match, Jeff. Did you have any any play on the uh, match against Panama? Uh, not not yet. I'm going to wait for the text messages that we're going to send to each other. <laughs> like, hey, what, what what are we doing? Um, I include the USA in a, in a money line parlay. I think it was Spain on the same day, so I was able to or Argentina maybe it was. Uh, I kind of rolled over uh, for a couple of days. I, that's what I've been doing for a lot of these wagers. Bear when these and USA is not that big of a favorite in this game. You can you feel comfortable probably laying it, but. You know, just kind of putting a couple of these ones together to make a parlay just to make it more appetizing. Look, I it's my first time wagering heavily on soccer bear, right? And I love you for sports it. wagering. I'm I'm learning the ropes of this. Um it is it's interesting, right? Because we've talked about this on this show, we've talked about it other times. When teams decide like we're not going to try anymore to score the game turns into something that's much different. Yep. And the live betting opportunities, this feels like a sport that, at least for me, the novice who's doing this for the first time, I don't think any sport has a better live wagering opportunities. I mean, the, 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 the numbers, you know, if you have an anytime goal scorer and that goal scorer doesn't, you know, they don't score within the first, what, 25, 30 minutes, you get a plus number yep. Yep. Yes, almost immediately. Um, and, you know, we see often in these games, goals are not scored immediately. So, you know, it kind of sort of takes time to work it through and get a breakaway and get guys open and get a penalty. And so um, there's just a lot of opportunities to, to get some live wagers. Um, but, you know, I think I think USA sort of looked like I thought they would, right? They Again, we talked about this before, the lack of, of uh, elite, striker right bear it's kind of plays its way in a lot of these games the uh the way they play so um panama's given them trouble in the past right they have i'm curious to see sort of if they're able to overcome what has been you know kind of a thorn in their side the way that panama's played them uh, the style they play and they've struggled with them um in the past right they lost in penalties just about a year ago uh to to panama so um i'm a little bit leery to lay the number here um, it's pretty big. I'm just looking up right now. So we have to find a way to get a parlay again, Bear. Yeah, maybe maybe U.S. or draw. Uh, the U.S. on the double chance would be a way. Uh, I think the big thing for this match is not only to get the result. Uh, Weston McKinney needs to be better. He, he, he did not look great 
in the opening match. So I think against Panama, he needs to be better. Uh, Uruguay peppered Panama with chances as well. They easily could have been up 4-0 on that match. So uh, I think this is probably an under tight match. I think you're going to see a very similar match to what you saw in the opener against Bolivia. It feels like a 1-0, 2-0. So under 2.5 is my is my play here. Yeah. And, and, and we'll play U.S. to keep a clean sheet as well, just because I don't think Panama will threaten very much either. So uh, I'd like to thank Jimmy Conrad for joining us. Jeff, appreciate you as always. We'll be uh, back again as both <laughs> Copa America and Euro 2024 continue as we advance into the knockarounds even further. Appreciate you watching on the YouTube channel. Appreciate you for downloading wherever you consume your podcast. Remember to rate, review, subscribe. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs> <laughs>